love this next study, primarily because it's a perfect example of sometimes when you do research, the research really has to be first knowing the right question to ask. To give you a little bit of idea, here's the title of the research. Chestnut leaves yield extract that disarms deadly staph bacteria. Extract shuts down staph without boosting its drug resistance. Now this is about the extract from obviously chestnut leaves or Castellana sativa as far as the plant itself. Now it's kind of interesting, often if they looked at, as researchers normally looked at chestnut leaves, especially when it came to folk medicine, they, it, they would add the chestnut leaf extract to basically whatever bacterial culture, whatever it was, and it would not kill the bacteria. Henceforth, the researchers basically say chestnut leaves has no impact, and they just pushed it aside saying, oh, it's only folklore. Well, an innovative researcher looked at this and said, hey, maybe due to folklore is right, and we're not really asking the right question. And therefore, breaking that veil of what's called experimenter bias. Let's go right into the research and you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about in a second. Chestnut leaves yield extract that disarms the deadly staph bacteria that we just talked about. And this is the study. It came out August 21st, 2015. And let's just take a quote directly from the first part of the study. For years, she and her colleagues, the researchers, have researched the traditional remedies of rural people in southern Italy and other parts of the Mediterranean. She said, quote, I felt strongly that people who dismiss traditional healing plants as medicine because the plants don't kill a pathogen were not asking the right questions. What if these plants play some other role in fighting disease? She was curious about this for generations, as they stated in the research article, local people and healers uh, repeatedly told us how they would make tea from the leaves of the chestnut tree and wash their skin with it to treat skin infections and inflammation. And obviously people with research would take the chestnut leaves, add it to bacterial culture, and nothing would happen, at least visibly what they saw. But this is what the discovered chestnut leaves actually did. And this is where it becomes fascinating. Tests showed that this extract from chestnut, uh, Castellana sativa, inhibits the ability of staph bacteria to communicate with one another, a process known as quorum sensing. MRSA uses this quorum sensing signaling system to manufacture toxins and ramp up its virulence. So, virulence. So this is the kind of the interesting part about it. It actually breaks all the communication pathways of the staph, preventing it from progressing and pro producing more toxins. Voila, disarming it, so to say. And let's see how far it actually went into other strains and varieties of staphs. This is what happened. We were able to trace out the pathways in the lab showing how our botanical extract blocks quorum sensing and turns off toxin production entirely. Turns off toxin production entirely. Many pharmaceutical companies are working on the development of monoclonal, monoclonal antibodies that target just one toxin. This is more exciting because we've shown with this extract, this little folklore remedy, so to say, we can turn off an entire cascade responsible for producing a variety of different toxins. So here you have this gold mine, this little chestnut leaf extract. Now keep in mind, the researchers went through a variety of uh, different compounds and they found basically two compounds that worked really well in chestnut leaf extract itself. But let's go further into the study and the research. This is what happened next in this when they went to animal testing. A single dose of the extract at 50 micrograms. 50 micrograms, we're talking like one single dose of 50 micrograms. That's like hard to even see. Cleared up MRSA skin lesions in lab mice, stopping tissue damage and red blood cell damage. The extract does not lose activity or become resistant even after two weeks repeated exposure and tests on human skin cells in a lab that showed that the botanical extract does not harm the skin cells or the normal skin microflora. I didn't post the research pictures of the experiments in the lab mice because they're a little bit gross for some viewers. However, if you saw how effective this little chestnut leaf extract was after six days from no lesions to clear skin, you'd be totally totally blown away. Thank you for these researchers for looking at the observational history of folklore medicine 
and learning the right question to ask. Chestnut leaves, powerful, powerful tool against MRSA, staph, and a variety of other type of things which we probably haven't even discovered as of yet. Again, I hope you find this helpful. This is Ralph Turchiano signing off. Oh, by the way, the 50 micrograms was injected initially under the area where the lesions were in the mice to start with. After that, everything else was pretty much done topically. Again, Raptor Channel, signing off once again. Thank you for listening.